we are reflecting on the seven words of mother mary the seventh word do whatever he tells you john chapter 2 verse 5 capturing the beauty of the conversion of the water into wine the poet alexander pope said the conscious waters saw its master and blushed We read the description of this miracle in the gospel according to St John chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out the mother of Jesus said to him they have no wine. And Jesus said to her woman what concern is that to you and to me my hour has not yet come His mother said to the servants do whatever he tells you Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification each holding 20 or 30 gallons Jesus said to them fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim He said to them now draw some out and take it to the chief steward so they took it when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from though the servants who had drawn the water knew the steward called the bridegroom and said to him everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk but you have kept the good wine until now jesus did this the first of his signs in cana of galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him do whatever he tells you these are the last words of mother mary as recorded in the bible She has spoken from the abundance of her heart. She has spoken as and when the need arose. And now that Jesus the eternal word has spoken, she remains silent. These are her parting message, her farewell legacy to us. We all want peace of mind and heart. often the problems that arise in our life are a result of our wanting to do our own thing mary teaches us the secret of serenity and sanctity and the secret is to do whatever jesus tells us to do no matter how small or big it may be how lit no matter how little or great that may be do whatever he tells you in typical maternal sensitivity she had become aware of the problem that was facing the newly wed couple and she just places the need before jesus she does not tell him what to do because you do not tell god what he ought to do she trusts him to meet that need according to his glorious riches she doesn't even tell the servants what to do she leaves that to jesus to tell them what they need to do how beautiful it is to let the lord tell others what to do and not to presume that to be our privilege Mary knows that Jesus will meet that need even though at first he seems to refuse her but she perseveres she knows in the depths of her being that the word made flesh will not refuse her any good thing especially when the honor of others is at stake she 
knows her role in the history of in God's plan of salvation. She knows that she is not the savior as sometimes we tend to be. She knows that she is a mediator and she mediates in the present situation. She introduces Jesus and then she moves out of the scene. She goes off scene and puts Jesus center stage. Some years back when telecommunications were not as well developed as they are today, if we wanted to make a long distance call, we would have to book a trunk call and then await a reply. The phone would ring and the operator would come on the line and she would connect us with the person whom we wanted to speak to and then that operator would move away into the background. Mary, after having initiated Jesus onto this great first miracle, fades away into the background. She tells the servants, do whatever he tells you. A very apt advice because Jesus was about to tell them some, to do something that would defy logic. He tells them to fill the stone water jars, the stone jars with water and they fill it to the brim. It reminds us of Moses whom a few thousand years ago God had told to do something that seemed illogical and it seemed downright silly and also impossible. Moses was supposed to take his staff and wave it over the Red Sea with the intention of splitting it into two. Sometimes God may ask us to do something that defies logic or even common sense that may seem impossible. At such moments when we doubt, it is Mary's words that remind us to do whatever he tells us. We consider the couple. They may have, they were blessed, but in retrospect, they may have felt, had we placed some more stone water jars. Each stone water jar contained, as St. John said, 30, uh, 20 to 30 gallons, which amounts to something around 100 to 120 liters. Often, we limit what Jesus has to give us by what we have to offer him. And what do we have to offer Jesus? Nothing but our littleness. But the more that we offer our littleness to him, the more is the flow of his goodness. What is offered to Jesus is water. What is affected by him is wine. What we offer is emptiness. What Jesus gives in return is fullness. What we have to offer him is need and want. What he gives us back is abundance, super abundance. This miracle ends with one important verse. Verse 11, which says, This then is the first of his signs that Jesus performed at Cana of Galilee, and he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. He worked the sign, the miracle, he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Mary did not need any sign to believe in Jesus. She believed in Jesus and Jesus worked the sign and revealed his glory and led others, the disciples and others to believe in him. Mary is the model disciple. Let us approach Jesus through her intercession. For Jesus never says a no to his mother.
we end this series of mother mary's seven words the first word uh, luke 1 chapter 1 verse 34 how shall this be since i am a virgin the second word behold the handmaid of the lord the third word be it done to me according to your word luke chapter 1 verse 38 the fourth word the magnificat luke chapter 1 verses 46 to 55 the fifth word child why have you treated us like this look your father and i have been searching you in great anxiety look chapter 2 verse 48 the sixth word they have no wife john 2 verse 3 and the seventh word do whatever he tells you john chapter 2 verse 5 we would like to say a thank you to monsignor alex ribello who suggested to us this theme and who guided us and inspired us along the way we would also like to say a thank you to all those priest friends who stood beside us and who gave us comments and feedbacks that encouraged us thank you